So yeah, I agree with you. And then for me, the thing that's where I diverge from Rothbard, um, and I'm not sure what Ayn Rand's perspective on this is that the crux of all this, because it is the physical security so that we can think and have discourse and all these things, that's what matters. So the crux mm -hmm. of property rights ends up being violence and protection from violence and the nature of mm -hmm. violence, the economics of violence. And that's why I see something like, like you can never legislate morality. We know that. But what you can do is change the economic incentives related to violence. And this is where there's a book that I mentioned a lot called The Sovereign Individual, where it mm -hmm. makes the case that having a money like a Bitcoin, that's a property right independent of the monopoly on violence. You don't need anyone else's um, exclusive acknowledgement of your property, right? You just need the information and you mm -hmm. need the Bitcoin network to exist, right? That's how, that's the mm -hmm. basis for your property, right? And because it's informational, you can custody in it, custody it in a way that's very difficult to confiscate. So it's very resistant to violence or said differently, mm -hmm. it makes the cost benefit of violence by the perpetrator much higher, right? If you've got physical gold mm -hmm. and you're safe, I come in with a gun, I can take the gold, I've got a pretty high return on my coercive act. But if you've got your Bitcoin in a multi-signature wallet that's distributed geographically, I can come in and rob you, but I'm probably not going to get your Bitcoin. So it, mm -hmm. it changes the incentives to violence. And I feel like this is where this seems to be like the only way to get government reined in. Like we, you have to get them. I hope not. I hope it's not the only, I mean, I, I like whenever you can do this kind of, I mean, whenever you can create a lot of friction and I would use like coercion or force. My issue with violence is we're too focused on, I mean, I think you're thinking of force as violence. So there's a, there's a good utility to that. But I, I think, unfortunately, we focus too much on violence, which is just, what does violence mean? It's just very apparent force in front of us. Mm -hmm. But most coercion is done through threat. Like most of the coercion, yes, right, I, there's no I, I violence I should qualify this when I say violence. I mean, also what the government, when the government, the IRS sends you a bill saying pay this or else, that's right. in the shadow of violence. So it's right, kind of right, like right, a, that's, an umbrella term. Right. That's what I think. That's. I just want to clarify for, yeah. for myself that I like, it's this, you should think of all things, all this, these coercive things, you should really think of it as ultimately this means the physical violence and everything we associate with that. So you take something like I'm focused on right now, there's this thing called what they call euphemistically the clean energy standard, which says the United States has to be has to get 80% of our electricity from quote clean sources mm -hmm. by 2030, which is eight and less than eight and a half years. And and it, uh, if you do the math on that, it means at least it has to be at least 50% solar and wind, mm. uh, which for reasons we'll probably get into, I think is an absolute catastrophe. Right now it's 10% and it's huge problems already with cost and reliability. But anyway, this is it's like that is not thought of. Most people aren't very up in arms about that. Like most people, they wouldn't think of that as a violent. Right. And if, you know, there was a school shooting, they'd be like, oh, well, that's that's terrible. But this clean energy standard, I mean, it's, it's so civilized and we're having a discussion or maybe we're not even having a discussion, but like, who cares? Like we think we're doing the right kind of thing, but like, like really it means the government gets to dictate how yeah. every single person powers their home and powers their business. And it gets to do so at gunpoint. Right. And- so it's not allowing you to live. I mean, we need electricity to live uh, at any yes. level and certainly to flourish. And so it's just this thing where it seems like it, it's just this. Um, it's actually deadlier, right? The clean. It's much deadlier, right? <laughs> so it's it's the, um, there's a, another, um, there's a book called uh, Objectivism, the Philosophy of Ayn Rand by a guy named Leonard Peikoff, who was kind of her, her main student. Uh, and he taught a course during her life that she said, oh, this is the best course on objectivism because she unfortunately never taught one herself mm. or, or wrote a book on her whole philosophy. Atlas Shrugged is kind of the closest. Um, but he has he just has this line in it that I'll butcher a little bit, but I've always remembered, which is just like, he talks about like the prim little bureaucrat is just as bad as like the gun wielding maniac. Mm, and I've just always thought right. of like, oh yeah, the prim little bureaucrat, like he's skinny. He kind of looks like Adam Silver, you know, the head of the NBA. He has that kind of, look to him and you just think like, oh, that's, that person's not bad. And he's just talking and maybe they're laughing yeah, and yeah, they're never yeah. saying anything straight. And it's like, no, you can be a killer just as much or more than like a bank robber, you know, or, you know, the kinds of things we associate with violence.